I, I just wanted to, to sum up several points that were here because you will see uh, during the General Assembly after that several of our missions and slides very closely resemble what uh, Professor Citerio just showed to us. And the problems and uh, the challenges of uh, an MD-PhD career have been long identified. So the resilience and uh, um, the, the editor-in-chief from intensive care medicine gets fund ref refused. And we will be all the time like going against a lot of barriers. And this resilience is very important. And one of the solutions to keep this curiosity and motivation is really networking, is to have your peers, your colleagues uh, from both your research field, but from completely different research fields, but who's doing sort of the same track as you are, because you can feel very, very um, fast in a lonely track, because indeed most of your colleagues will be clinicians and uh, a minority of them will be also be researchers and some of them will have this clinician scientist career uh, which is sort of identified for so long being an endangered species but very productive. So actually you will see that some of our slides with different colors and different sentences very much resemble uh, the, same, the same challenges and there is literature in it identifying uh, that uh, the number of physician scientists have been declining and we, we long identified that in Europe uh, we are not as developed in this track as, as, as the US and Canada are. So this is the reason why AMPA appeared 10 years ago. Uh, it's because we identified that we need links uh, since the very beginning, since we are at med school and uh, people are interested in research, to have someone supporting and guiding, mentoring, so you can uh, see which opportunities for funding or just to have advice on your career. Uh, so that's why we exist. And there's a reason why we're here today. Uh, it's because we identify this Virgilio program growing in, in the north of Italy, and we said, cool, this is another country cooking a good solution for MD, PhDs, because uh, France and Switzerland have been doing, doing that for about 20, 30 years. Uh, the UK created two programs, now a third one, but it's, it's very like uh, sort of growing slowly compared to, to, to the US. And uh, now uh, the, the idea of the European MD PhD Association is just to gather these uh, students and you will see that uh, in our General Assembly we will show you some actions that we did uh, that pretty much go in the same direction. So the problems you've been identifying about, some, sometimes my clinical uh, colleagues or professors don't really understand what I'm doing, don't support me, uh, or I have a hard time finding a tutor, or uh, how can I do to get in the program, or when I finish my PhD, how do I do now, because I need to be a resident, uh, so how can I combine it? Or once uh, I graduated and I have a specialist title, how can I become journal editor and how can I reach the position where all these professors are today? It's very difficult and you will see each one will have a lonely track in the way that you will cook it on the way. It's really a cooking way and there is no example that fits everyone. It will depend on the opportunities and these opportunities appear like today, like in a conference like this, you get to know colleagues. I am myself an anesthesia and ICU doctor I paid to go to workshops with Cara, Cara Gobi and in the same slides I've been here today. So it's sort of, ah, oh, so he's, he's walking in fields that I actually work as well. And this happens very often like this. So you just go um, to conferences and indeed uh, we are a small community. So try to imagine why are we doing a European MD PhD conference and this room is not full. Because actually you will see around you will have plenty of colleagues that will be very, very good clinicians, but to have this sort of uh, dual training of also being a researcher and keep your time, try to imagine how resilient you have to be to manage 65 papers per day, plus getting funding, plus mentoring your, all your students and uh, all your staff in the hospital at the same time, because you're also a clinician and you have all these tasks and still bike, biking and cooking and have a family and it's, certain times you feel like uh, how can I manage all these and take advice and a mentor and people that support your track, it's, it's really an important thing. So I will really, really, really invite you to stay for the General Assembly because of course there, there are some 
financial reports to approve and some elections to do because it's an official moment. But most of it will be uh, guidance through what we do all over the year. And we will take your suggestions and maybe some of you will be motivated to join our ranks and to collaborate with us uh, to get EMPA bigger and to include Italy uh, in our ranks. And we are very, very, very happy that, um, that uh, Italy is sort of flourishing and supporting MD, PhD programs uh, as something uh, uh, structured uh, for the future. So sorry for being speaking so, for so long, but I wanted to link because even myself, because I already graduated from my MD, PhD, but uh, I've been listening to this sort of advice of uh, keep, keep a healthy lifestyle, combine the different interests you have in your personal life, be balanced, be resilient, but uh, it's, it's still hard and you, you get to understand all these suggestions on the way. So when you are just launching your PhD, you don't understand actually the challenges that lie ahead. And as, as you go through, you realize why that professor told me that years ago. It's because you will probably earn less than your clinical peers. They will do uh, uh, private practice. They will be earning more than you. They will work less hours than you do. They will have more time for their family. So this curiosity that kind of probably guided you to apply to this program, it's going to be the, the fuel that will keep you motivated across the way. So it's, it's good that you take all these pieces of advice and keep them on the way because you will probably build a puzzle and understand why that advice came uh, at that point and you will see that you will have another, uh, another professor uh, giving a completely different but somehow similar talk, the Professor Citerio, it will be Professor Sen telling you how to be a good clinician scientist, how can you combine these and you will every time have a different advice because uh, you cook it on the way. You can do a neuro cucina, but you will have to cook and each one of you will do a different research track. And you will see that in Europe, some people do it while medical students, others do during residency, and some people start their MD, PhD when they already have children and they're 35 years old. So there is no correct way to do. Uh, and all of them will be certainly good, even if after 30 years of career, you will still have your grants refused, and that's normal. You just have to be resilient enough, and um, there's a good reason why you're here today. It's probably <laughs> because you didn't choose the, the easy path. <laughs> so. Yeah, nice to meet you all in presence. My name is Giorgio, I'm from Humanitas University, and I'm a huge fan, actually, of the Virgilio program. This is one of the reasons why at that time, six years ago, I decided to go with Humanitas and then the ART became the, the Virgilio. So, well that's, well, that's what I love, actually. And I think that mentors actually play a huge role. And so, of course, there must be a, like a fine-tuning with mentors that is still in progress. So I can see, well, I can see very good process. And I have a few suggestions, actually, for the program. Uh, I would be really interested to see like a financial support for internship, whatever Congress is, because that could help a lot, could help a lot a student. Like I went for a summer internship, and of course, why not? I mean, it could be a possibility that makes this program even better. And. Uh, yeah, and also some courses would be quite interesting to move some courses earlier. For example, I don't know, now we are doing uh, scientific writing that is actually super good, but it could be that during this last year you already had the opportunity to write some paper. So, yeah, quite interesting, but maybe earlier could be much more useful, at least for me, I don't know, yeah. And just one last point. And I don't know if this is possible, because I see that Italy sometimes is not that easy to, for, for a student to go in a lab. I'm not that independent in the lab. I must be tutored, and I went in the UK, and I took a course, and then I went to the confocal whenever I want. I, was, I, I could uh, go to the lab freely and do my experiment, uh, everything. I was completely free. In Italy, it's not like that. I cannot use the confocal, even though I use it in the UK. I don't know why. And uh, also, I don't know if I use the cryostat, uh, the vibraton, whatever, uh, I cannot use it without supervision. I don't know if thanks to the Virgilio program there would be the possibility to, to be much more free to, 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 to look, 
to learn to be independent and yeah, but in any case, yeah, again, I, I really loved the virtual program and my journey, so thank you very much. Okay, I, I, I will leave now to the uh, board of the EMPA, but let me just answer to the uh, last comment, which I uh, believe is very important, and I would like to thank all the suggestion that has been given. Um, the program uh, started, I forgot your name. Giorgio. Giorgio. The program started thanks to a grant which uh, basically covered the uh, few items, which of course, uh, let's say the organization of the activity, uh, a tips to the uh, tutor in the lab, which I believe is very important, not because uh, it's a matter of money. The tutor that follow you in the lab of the rotation and not becoming rich for these tips, okay? But it's again something that you acknowledge the time uh, the person uh, dedicated to your, uh, uh, to the tutorship, to spend time to share uh, and to, uh, and this is of course a link to the grant. And unfortunately now the grant is over and this is something that each university should cover in order to continue. I believe that it's very important. There is no money for the mentorship, which I believe is correct because uh, it's part of our duty as professor to do mentorship, as uh, you heard from uh, Giuseppe. Uh, at the beginning, we thought it would have been possible to have uh, uh, financial support from what you said, for exchange, uh, for moving around to one lab to the other. Uh, and this, of course, something that uh, probably we were not so successful, even for the financial support. But I believe now, and this is our challenge for the future, personally, I am strongly committed, and I'm speaking on behalf of this university, but I'm sure that it would be the same uh, of the University of Milano and the Humanitas as well, that we need to plan for uh, how to support uh, this program. Because if we are leaving to the individual university, I believe that the game will be over by time. Hmm. Now we need uh, to strengthen, thanks to the success, and I'm very proud about that. If you ask to me, are you happy about this program? Are you? Absolutely. I have to say it's probably one of the best success I have contributed in, in my uh, career. Okay? And so, but now there is a step forward, which is, as you said, to give better and stronger roots to this program. And this, of course, uh, can be a uh, plan uh, as a part of the strategic uh, uh, of the different university, which I have to say within the public side is not easy, but even in the private side is not so easy. Okay? And accordingly, we need to find a way. I don't think, uh, let's say, to become a sort of independent body because it would not make any sense, but to find a way to financially, uh, you know, we can do fundraising for this type of activity and then accordingly try to find a way to get uh, money even to support and to give a larger perspective, as you said. So with these words, I'm going to conclude and to give to Andre for the EMPA assembly, otherwise you are, Just I'm on not the money. correct. On the money topic. Sorry? Yeah, but I'm giving at the end of the assembly. So, Andre, please. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to, before we start the assembly, go for two informations on money information. Money is always an important thing. So, because you put the question in a good moment in the, person, in the presence of the good person, you were just offered two free positions. 
to the next uh, brain, neuro, neuro brain school, summer school from Professor Citerio. So he, there are two free entrances for Virgilio students who do uh, neuro research that have just been offered at this very moment. I bet first come, first serve. So uh, show your motivation and write a small email, I believe. Uh, and second information is that uh, you will see during our slides that it has just been launched a uh, European uh, international MD-PhD granting system that was funded uh, with over two million for, from the European Commission. So you will see there, re there will be a call very soon launched. So if any of you is just finishing the, 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 the masses, the, the track of Virgilio School, and you're wondering where and how you can go for a PhD, there is a very, very, very fresh opportunity just being launched by seven, uh, seven consortium institutes in Europe uh, based with their headquarters in Barcelona. But you will just see uh, in a couple of minutes, and that's another uh, money solution for your problem and for, for, for all of you. So just, just keep, keep listening. <laughs> so I just wanted to speak to you about EMPA, who we are, what we do. So EMPA was, uh, was uh, funded in 2015 in Groningen. Uh, and we've been doing a conference every year since then. Uh, and we are very, very proud of being uh, gathering MD, PhD students from different countries uh, and different perspectives. And the, the mission, as I, it has been seen here, it's all about networking, social networking, scientific networking, and to have some sort of mentorship and political help for those who are in need. So uh, if there is any of you having problems with their career track, their supervisor, their uh, orientation, or how do they get funded, or what do they do, uh, this is why we are here, uh, to give you answers. Some of us would be in a stage of the career which is uh, uh, more advanced, so you can always seek for advice. And we have a lot of social platforms. You will see Clara is the person who's been dealing with our LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and you will see that there is a lot of ways of contacting us. And because we are your stage, your age, you don't need to say, dear professor, you just say, hey, Andre, uh, I'm from Milan. I have a, a question to put to you. So this happens to us very, very often, and sometimes we receive emails from, from Iran, from Turkey, from people that are not even in Europe but would like to come to Europe, and how, did, how does it work, how do we get funded, how do we apply to university. So really feel free to, to get in touch with us because this is our role. This role is accomplished by uh, uh, a structure, so there is always uh, political statues behind an association, so there is legal, uh, legal documents defining what we do and how we do. So we are the executive board, so we are the ones dealing with the, the, the functioning of everyday life of, the, life of the association, but we are supported by other people. So there is a senior advisory board, so professors uh, that uh, give us help when we have to select your abstracts, when we have to build a scientific program for a conference. So we also need mentors. So we are using this mentorship to guide our scientific actions. We have a board of representatives, which are satellites of our association, people that represent each country in Europe that help uh, conveying the information every time we have an event or that help us at a local, well, local, national uh, level to organize physical in-person events or just gathering or conveying information. So uh, if you want to become a representative from Italy, again, you can just uh, drop us a line and uh, we can keep you on the ranks. And finally, last year during the General Assembly, we created the EMPA Alumni Council, which is the gray box that will gather the ones leaving the executive board that can always serve as advisors but no longer become part of the executive team. So this is us. This is the team that has been elected a year ago and that has been working. And as you will see uh, in a couple of slides, uh, I will present you the, the new board to be elected today. 
uh, I think it's 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 probably a bit too much if every one of us presents his own track, but we are coming from uh, different countries and we have completely different research fields. It doesn't really matter if you work in the, in the same field because that's not what unites us. It's just the motivation of uh, doing a sort of combined research and clinical training with, as you will see, very, very, very different um, uh, structures. And I will show you in a couple of slides how is it done in Europe in different countries. Um, yeah, hello and welcome also from my side. I'm the vice president and secretary um, from EMPA. I've been in EMPA for a really long time now. And um, I, I really enjoy uh, making all the different connections with people. Um, I'm from Germany and um, one of my um, um, yeah, jobs in the EMPA board was to connect with the senior advisory board. Um, they are, um, like Andre said, our mentors, but um, they are also um, yeah, taking part in, in conferences and um, they are people that we can always um, connect to and ask for advice. Um, and often they are people that um, have uh, experience in um, in, in advising young people, so um, so this is the advisory board that we have right now. It's uh, um, I will just quickly introduce them. It's um, Professor Randy Gallup. She's an MD PhD um, from the US. Actually, she's um, from the Harvard Medical School, um, a psychiatry professor. Um, her research is in neuroimaging. And um, she's also involved in neuroimaging training programs. So um, that's her field. Then uh, Professor Jatin Weiss, also from the US. Um, he's in the Massachusetts uh, General Hospital and um, the program director of the um, Internal Medicine Residency Program. Um, he's um, in touch with us a lot. Um, and also, for example, um, looking at the abstracts, um, selecting abstracts. So. He's always someone that we can count on. Then Professor um, Wally Tabre, um, he's um, from Switzerland, um, head of the anesthesiology investigative unit. Um, then we have Professor Lawrence Rajendran, um, he's um, uh, an Alzheimer researcher. Um, from, so he, he was a professor in, in, in the UK, but also in Zurich. Um, and he's also a very powerful communicator in science. So he's the CEO of um, What's On and also uh, the founder of Science Matters. Um, and he's, uh, that's his passion of, of like communicating science to the public. Um, and then we also have uh, Professor Valérie Lamour um, from Strasbourg. Um, and she's the coordinator of the Strasbourg, Strasbourg MD-PhD program. So next, um, like Andre already said, we have the um, national representatives, um, which is um, a position open to basically um, all of you to become ambassadors of, of EMPA for your country. Um, basically, like, like we already had the, the discussion around right now, it's, um, it's about us um, trying to get to know you and trying to get the, the problems that you have in your country. There are a lot of things that we have in common as MD-PhD students, a lot of things of like trying to combine research and science uh, and, and, and medicine and um, trying to balance those things. They're, those are very similar problems, but also each country has their own challenges and, and a lot of countries um, don't have a structured program. Um, so that's something that, that we can provide for them also to, to have a structure and to go to their universities and show them there's a structure for, for MD PhD students can we start something like that in our country? So we, we can be as a like an advisor to, to students who want to start their own their own program in their countries. And also for, for them to tell us um, what are the challenges and how can we are, how we can help and support you. So if any of you again are interested, <laughs> just approach us um, at any any time and, and tell us what you would like to do. Who's next? Yes, I, I won't really lose much time. It's just showing that we, you, we published a couple of years ago what's going on in Europe. So it's just to show you that each country do, does it its own way. 
So it's some countries do it as, as undergraduates, some only start after you get your MD diploma, and others uh, combine both parts, doing some research years or semesters as undergrads, and then completing your PhD as postgrads. So it's really very different. And uh, that's why I told you that you will see that each one of you will do it in a different way, not only because university is designed in a different way, but because you will be interested in research in a different time of your career. So don't, don't, don't get uh, an advice as a, as a very structured thing, because all these ways are good. And uh, um, every one of us did it in a different way, because we are coming from, from different countries. Um, Hello, my name is Dimitrios. I am an MDBPG student in Geneva, Switzerland. So the European MDPG Association has also a website where you can find useful information such as a map with the universities around Europe that they have an, an MDPG program that you can apply to. And also you can find information such as the history of the organization and also the current and the previous uh, executive board members. And also the most important, you can also find uh, the upcoming events organized uh, by our organization or uh, affiliation, affiliated uh, other organizations. And also we invite you to, to visit our website in order to subscribe. Uh, you can find the QR code here and you can subscribe to, 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 to be a member of, the, of our organization and also to receive our newsletter to find uh, about the news and the upcoming events. Hi guys, my name is Maxime. Uh, I'm a French MDPD student who is finishing my PhD in London at the moment. And I was in charge of writing the newsletter over the last uh, three years of EMPA, together with Gail Mayos, another student also in France. Uh, so in, back in 2017, we had 203 recipients of our newsletter, which it is a number which increased to about 1,000. Now, if you also want to receive it, I think most of the people registered to today's conference have been added to the newsletter by Clara, but we have a link on our website where you can add your email address and you will be updated. Uh, oops. So uh, the format of our newsletters is as follows. So we talk about four uh, categories of, of news, depending on, on the season. We write about four times a year to not spam you, so don't worry, you can subscribe without uh, without fear. Uh, your careers is a section which uh, talks about the kind of talks that you heard about today. Um, senior MD PhD members who um, uh, tell, uh, walk you through their career, uh, how they managed to combine to combine research and clinics over the life. Europolis is, an, is a section which will be heavy again, because now that COVID is over, we can meet in person and we have updates to give about MPAC conferences. It's updating you about what's happening in the French, British, Swiss, in particular, MDPHD societies, as well as EMPA, updating you about conferences and sending you, you know, pictures. Uh, urology is a section which is um, less frequent. These are some analysis that we write about uh, MDPHD tracks across Europe. The last one was comparing the MDPHD track in France and in the UK, for instance, so this can be interesting to see um, the ways in which you can train yourself in, in, this, in this double career. And finally, Europe is, is your publication. So whenever you guys publish anything, please send us your paper and we will list it in our, you know, probably Italian section <laughs> um, of, of, of the newsletter. So, you know, this is really meant to be a tribune for, for you guys to, to feature your content. Um, yeah, so. These are just, you know, we don't really have time now uh, to, to go through these in details. But uh, in particular, these are examples of uh, local events that we have organized over the years. On the top left, you can see in 2019. Uh, sorry? Yeah, 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 the second picture, yeah. <laughs> it's, don't worry. <laughs> um, which was uh, in the UK with uh, Stefan Marciniak here. Uh, we are trying to start again organizing local dinners uh, so to make people travel around Europe to meet in person, because really that's the best way to network. And I will let Clara take over for the second half of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
yes, because um, on the top uh, right you can see uh, the La Giornata del Medico Ricercatore was uh, the first uh, event that was uh, jointly uh, organized by the, the European MDPHD and uh, uh, the Virgilio program. Um, while uh, and then during the last uh, uh, graduation ceremony we were, I was present representing the European MDPHD Association. Uh, this is another kind of event uh, that uh, me, as uh, previously as a, the Italian representative uh, of um, uh, in the European MDPHD Association, and then uh, as uh, uh, IT and social media manager of the executive board, uh, I uh, try to make some links uh, between uh, that is all my all the mission that I try to. Um, to, to, to be bring on during, during these years, uh, I tried to make a connection between the uh, European MDPHD Association and you. Uh, it's uh, uh, fundamentally what I've done. Uh, this uh, uh, was, uh, um, <laughs> the, the second part of, of this slide is uh, our last conference. Uh, so uh, in the, our last in-person conference was in, uh, uh, in uh, 2019 uh, and it was in Geneva in the, the biotech uh, uh, campus uh, of Geneva. Um, while uh, um, <laughs> during these uh, two uh, past years, uh, we uh, tried to fill the gap be between uh, um, uh, the among uh, MD PhD students uh, from, uh, from different countries uh, using also online events, of course. Uh, we have been uh, not so um, effective, uh, not so, uh, not enough uh, uh, strong to uh, to make it uh, to make a lot of events for you, not to, to make you feel uh, uh, isolated at home. Uh, but uh, um, we now uh, we opened a YouTube channel, for example, that uh, was something made. Uh, by, by us during this year. We, we improve our, our uh, Facebook uh, um, pages. Uh, we invited speakers to speak in online events. Uh, but uh, uh, what we, uh, and we improve the, the website too, um, we tried to, uh, we tried, we, we had a virtual um, uh, online conference in, in 2021. Uh, most, some one of you were, were, was present, I'm sure. Um, while uh, um, uh, what we uh, are now, what, 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 we, what the, the EMPA wants to do now is, uh, of course, to improve uh, the uh, social media uh, field of the association, uh, also because uh, uh, you, young students, are <laughs> better than millennials in, uh, uh, in using uh, all, uh, all this stuff. Uh, a proposal is uh, to continue also with the online events uh, um, that will be uh, recorded and uh, uh, present in our U YouTube channel. And we are um, discussing also about Instagram uh, because it's not so scientific, but uh, there will be place uh, uh, in, uh, spoiler, in our, <laughs> in our uh, um, info board, in your info board, uh, um, to an influencer for the first time. This was uh, my idea. <laughs> um, so, and this uh, because uh, uh, in science, uh, as uh, Professor Citerio, and uh, it was already said today, uh, interconnection uh, is not just uh, made of articles, made of collaboration, made of experiments, but it's made of people, but it is also made of social media. This is. Uh, Sharing is caring. Uh, I'm a child neuropsychiatry, and uh, now I'm in residency as a child neuropsychiatrist. And I, the, the more I go on, the, the more I trust uh, in, the, in this sentence. So, um, 
of course, there are different organizations also all over Europe that um, deal with, with um, medical research and um, different associations and, and our connections basically all over Europe. And here are some organizations that we would like to um, present to you. And those are um, our um, associations that we, that we collaborate with and, and um, connect with. So this is the um, uh, European um, Pharmaceutical Students uh, Association. It's a, it's a really big organization. Um, I think about 100,000 uh, students are involved in this. Um, and they're from 37 different um, European countries. Um, they're very, they are very um, good structures and, and involved uh, um, association. And what's just, which is really nice is that they have um, a soft skill training program um, with a lot of tutors, um, like you already said, for example, for scientific writing um, and, and other things like this. And um, we already drew up a, a co collaboration agreement with them. So the plan is to collaborate uh, more in the future and um, exchange speakers and, and workshops and um, so that they would be able to come to our conferences and vice versa and, and share resources, which of course they have a lot more because they're a huge organization. So, uh, we're just going to present you what, what's going on because there's a lot of external affairs. We have partners uh, with different uh, organizations and uh, a lot of these memorandums of agreement were made just two, three years ago, and things have been a bit stuck because of COVID. So a lot of uh, the events that we wanted to do in collaboration uh, didn't really happen because physical events didn't happen. That's why we are here today, because we already started planning a conference with Virgilio program uh, previously when things were virtual. And if this was what uh, I just uh, spoke to you before. So it's called Emerald. Um, which is uh, an international MD-PhD uh, program, uh, which has just been funded by the European uh, Commission. The first call opened last year, so the first candidates that were enrolled uh, just started um, last month, and there will be a second call uh, running now with grants for a uh, three-year uh, MD-PhD in one of these institutes. Uh, which will uh, complete uh, a 24, uh, 24 grants um, to, to, to do your research. So this, this was a solution, just to give you an idea how institutions handle uh, um, uh, struggles, financial struggles. Uh, the Barcelona University just got the same problem as you some years ago, so they just had a specific number of years funded by the state, and it finished. So they couldn't enroll MD-PhD students anymore because the grant just reached the end. So what they did is that they turned out to the European Commission and they said, okay, so we can't get fund to the University of Barcelona, but if we find a consortium, maybe we can get European funding for our uh, PhD program. So that's what happened. So uh, they basically built an international program so they could apply to the Horizon 2020 funding, which is based for multinational uh, purposes. And they could get these 2.3 million euro to finance 24 colleagues like you uh, to do their own uh, PhD. So this funding is not over. They still have about two thirds of the grants uh, which are still available. So if you are wondering which step to go next, you can apply for one of these uh, grants and you will find all the information in their website. I think it's really small down there, but it's emerald slash mdphd.eu and you can get all the application uh, information in there. Uh, so I'm Grigorina from Romania. Um, and I will uh, tell you some information about ICSTO, which is an international consortium for clinical uh, scientists uh, training organizations. Um, the aim of ICSTO is to um, 
uh, advocate for clinical scientists and also to facilitate uh, collaboration and connections between clinical scientists all around the world. So you can see that there are uh, six main organizations from different regions, um, three from Europe, uh, one is EMPA, another one is AMPS from uh, France, and another one is from Switzerland, and also there is a um, EPSA from the United States and uh, AMSA from uh, Asia and also from Canada, uh, CITAC. Um, there are also some uh, benefits for the members, uh, such as uh, um, discounts to conferences and also training opportunities or webinars or access to databases or uh, research. And um, um, also Ixto has a website but currently is uh, under construction so I advise you to, to uh, watch uh, and keep an eye on Ixto and um, um, we will continue our uh, work and agreement uh, uh, because it was a bit difficult during pandemics, but uh, for sure uh, we are going to continue our work together between all the organizations um, around the world for, for clinical scientists. Okay, so this is just uh, some legal obligations, so I'll just show you our balance from, from past year. Um, so we didn't spend much, we didn't earn much. It's good, and we are not negative. So this is public information, so uh, we, um, ah, this is certainly wrong. Uh, website hosting and maintenance, it's certainly not <laughs> He was, he was, uh, he was 90 something euros. <laughs> It was, I did this at 1 a.m. today, so uh, it, it was a typo. So it was 92 euros, I guess, the website hosting. Uh, so basically, um, we have our legal headquarters in Groningen in the Netherlands, so our bank account and siege is in there. The money is in euro, and it's, uh, this is our balance. Uh, so we have a very, very low income because we make it mostly free. So if you want to receive our newsletter, you don't pay. Uh, and uh, the membership fee for a year is 10 euros. So it's really symbolic. It's just for us to have a little bit of positive balance so we can pay our website hosting and the very little um, expenses that we have with our bank account. And most of, ah, uh, that's it. So it's, it's the 109 euro is the website hosting and the 3,002 is the Congress expenditures. <laughs> so now I realize the mistake. Uh, and uh, so the total grant is correct, okay? It's just the two parcels there that are inverted. Um, so just like everyone, we, we have difficulty finding, finding money, but hopefully every time we have a conference, we have support from organizers. The support today, it's mostly to be thanked to Vigilio program, all these amphitheater, the structures, the IT technician, the, the food you're going to have now at lunch. A lot of things have been uh, given by Virgilio, and uh, so we have a big, big, big thanks to give to you. And Empa tried also to help, so we paid a little coffee and uh, cakes you had just in a while ago, and we will pay the dinner you will have tonight. So if you are interested to join, there will be uh, dinner, free full and food and drinks. So this is on our behalf. <laughs> you. So now I will let the word to the future uh, I will say future is in the very, very near future election of uh, the person who's proposed to be the next president of the, the European MDPHD Association that will speak to you about the future plans. Antonia. Thank you, André. Um, yes, so I'm Antonia. I'm an MDPHD student in the Netherlands. And um, 
I think it's an honor to take over this role from Andre. And uh, Empa has achieved a lot in the past, but I think the future is really exciting, especially now post-COVID, or at least um, <laughs> two years after COVID, we can finally move on and uh, try to connect Europe even more. And we do have some plans for the future, of course. And one of them is um, we want you all to participate, of course. We want to grow EMPA as much as possible and connect uh, all the medical students and yeah, young clinician scientists across Europe. Um, because I think we can all benefit from the connections we have to each other. And um, of course, we want to gather more info on all the different programs, but also how we can assist different programs, just like Virgilio or Emeralds, how we can collaborate across Europe to, uh, yeah, to go further with this initiative and improve the amount of uh, clinician scientists that we have. And um, yeah, Emerald is a special project, of course, and I think it stands really for the core values we also have in EMPA. Uh, once again, connecting different European countries and making sure that you can learn across different countries and nationalities to improve your training and learn from uh, different centers and experiences, different mentors and structures that you can learn from. Uh, so I think that's a really exciting part, and of course it would be also great if uh, more people apply to the Emerald program, because I think it's a really, really great opportunity. Um, yes, and the last point, of course, is that we want to organize another conference next year, and my hope is that we can <laughs> gather a lot more people for that one, because now, of course, um, um, the last two years, it was very difficult to recruit members. Um, it was already difficult enough to... <laughs> so I'm not going to touch anything anymore. It was already difficult enough to stay connected to the people in your own uh, city, not even country, and then to connect people across Europe was very, very difficult. So I think um, the upcoming conference has a lot of potential, especially if we gain new country representatives and to connect even more people uh, to find a great place to host this event. And uh, yeah, I think today was already a really great example on how this could work. So I hope to see you guys all next year. Thank you. Yeah. So now again, one of these political moments. Now it's not about money, but positions. So this is uh, the group of people you've just seen. We are all, all here at the exception of Malin, Leimkuller, our treasurer, who's uh, deserving a little holiday uh, in Argentina. But she sends a lot of greetings to all of you, and she's done a, a huge work over our past uh, three, four years, because she is uh, studying and working in Groningen, where our legal siege is. So she was the one dealing with our uh, bank account and legal documents. Um, uh, so uh, a big thanks to Malin. And as you will see in the next slide, there will be a lot of change. So it's nearly no uh, repetition, which is a good thing. It's our will, and it's also our mission to be uh, renewed by people who are actually ongoing through their MD, PhD. So uh, we will stay around for advice. Uh, when you write an email to the M uh, EU MD, PhD Association at gmail.com, uh, the, the, the current executive board is the one receiving your request, but they will have connections with the older members and the senior advisor board to get all the information. So um, this is the part where uh, we will call all of you here to be voted so people know whose names belong to these faces. And before the election, I will just show you one single person uh, who's missing from here. So she couldn't attend, so she presented herself on a video. So uh, uh, it's the, the way of replacing it. It's, it's Yvonne. Uh, she, she belongs to the Emerald program. So she has just uh, got a grant from this uh, European funded program. And she will start her uh, MD, PhD uh, in the Netherlands. And she wanted to tell you some words. 
Hi everybody, I hope you're having fun in Milan and you're enjoying the Congress. My name is Yvonne Rodriguez and I'm a first year MD PhD student currently working at the Netherlands Cancer Institute under the Emerald program. Today, I would like to share with you my main motivation to join EMPA. And it is my willingness to join to a network that gives visibility of the need of doing research hand in hand with clinical practice. I would like to join EMPA to contribute on spreading the word of different congresses, fellowships and opportunities for other peers with other institutions. I believe that teamwork, collaboration, interdisciplinarity are part of the core values to make any association or any team succeed. Yvonne is going to be our next influencer. This is the, the, the official name, social media and IT manager. So she'll be the one responsible for all the posts that you'll get uh, in our social media platforms. So all other people will uh, be in front of you. That's why we didn't make a video. Uh, and Gael, the, our communications officer, uh, she didn't make a video because she's already uh, in our ranks. So she's the one doing all the newsletters that uh, Maxime uh, showed to you. So she's the one dealing with uh, our membership lists and getting uh, sure that the, the news every three months get concised in a, in a newsletter and reach every one of you. So there is a technical issue now with, um, with the subscription to our newsletter. So the QR code that we, we put in the link. It's okay, it's okay. It's, it's fixed? Okay, it's fixed. It was not uh, an hour ago. So no problem at all. If you want to subscribe, you can go. <laughs> so I will probably leave the word to uh, each one of them very, very briefly to present uh, who they are, where they're doing your research, and uh, where they come from, so you get to know the, the members before you vote them. Yes, so I already introduced myself a little bit, um, but just to give you some more context, so I actually study in Groningen, which is the city where EMPA was founded a few years ago. And I'm doing my research in pediatrics on rare genetic liver diseases. Um, yeah, and I'll be the new president, hopefully. Hello, my name is Dimitrios Daskalou. I'm an MD-PhD student in Geneva, Switzerland. My main focus on research is the inner ear function and more precisely the protection of the inner ear from acquired forms of hearing loss. Uh, so I'm about to start my MD-PhD right now. Uh, I joined the association earlier this year and I helped with the organization of this conference. And uh, so I would like to officially join uh, EMPA in the position of uh, vice president. And I would like to, to foster the organization, help and promote uh, the communication between uh, MDPG students around, uh, around uh, uh, Europe and also to, to promote the, um, MDP, the uh, clinician scientist uh, career uh, pathway. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Pre van den Berg. I'm uh, born and raised in the Netherlands, uh, studying in Groningen where I focus uh, for my PhD on cardio-oncology, so the intersection of heart failure and cancer. Um, similarly to Dimitrios and Antonia, I very recently joined EMPA, and I'm looking forward to uh, well, carry out under his legacy and build on something beautiful in the future. So, cheers. So, I'm Grigorina from Romania. Um, I joined EMPA four years ago, um, and I decided to continue the work in EMPA for this year. Um, I did my um, uh, my undergraduate in Romania and also PhD in Romania in applied chemistry, and then I had some internships in, uh, in France and also in um, um, in Sweden, um, a master, and I want to finish some uh, work that uh, I start uh, earlier in um, the international as international affairs uh, officer, and then of course I will uh, give my pleasure to some uh, fresh uh, new blood uh, students. As far as I am aware, there is no list B. So uh, 
we will be voting in a single set of students. Usually it's a very friend, friendly moment, so we've never had a competition uh, because we've been uh, actually uh, gathering our members across the years. So some, some of these names you've seen here joined some, some weeks ago, others some months ago. So uh, this is the way we work. So in the, during the next 12 months, some of you might join our ranks as national representatives. So just approach us during coffee breaks, dinner, tonight, lunch, if you have any interest, because uh, the, the way we collaborate is always very, very, very flexible. So for the legal point of view, I will have to ask if anyone has anything against the composition of the future board. Very good, so they are formally elected. And in the name of, well, myself, very honestly, and also from my colleagues from the previous board, we wish you all the luck and success. So this is a, a sentence in, 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 in Dutch we always use at the end of our meetings. Uh, you, you excuse my, my, my accent, okay? It's wat weder de tafel komt, which is uh, if you have something else to discuss. Is there anything else on the table? So uh, if we didn't touch a topic that you want to discuss, or if you have any suggestion to give to EMPA, just speak now or speak later with us if it's a bit of a sensitive matter. But if you want to say something publicly, just hit it now. Ah, don't be shy. opportunities or even like to talk among us about this? It's always an issue. I realize that today we had four male speakers. No, obviously, no, no, I, no, I, no, I, I do realize afternoon. this. It isn't, it's four. Angela is ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. But it's always a, a matter of balance. And if you look at the heads of departments in medicine and everything, you see that there is a lot of males, right? And uh, every time we compose our ranks, uh, it's very, very balanced now. And we take this into account because uh, I think it's good to see that the opportunities in science for, for women should exactly be the same as for men. And sometimes uh, family and, and life, personal uh, life makes that opportunities are not the same and sometimes salary is not the same as well. So it's a very delicate matter and it's a preoccupation of uh, grant providers, of journals, of institutions to have uh, sort of canals that are dedicated for female researchers. In EMPA, we don't have a, a specific action dedicated for female researchers, but we are always preoccupied every time we, we do something to include a, a balanced composition. And uh, as, as you've seen, uh, we don't have a zero euro balance, and our aim is never to go profit. So uh, one thing that we have in our website and that we say very often is that if there is any suggestion and it can be on this topic or another one. If you have an idea of an event and you need help either from organizing or financial point of view, we can give small grants to support any of your ideas. But I don't have a specific course of action uh, uh, for, for female researchers. This is a sensitive topic. As in Nathaniel. Gulfort. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Nathaniel. I'm former MPS president and uh, I had the opportunity to work with uh, the board of EMPA, uh, the former board of EMPA now, and Andre especially, uh, which were absolutely uh, Great, so thank you very much for all your work and congratulations for, to the new board and yeah, uh, good luck.
Looks like lunchtime. Professor Bianchi, do you have any, yeah, any specific uh, I would just, uh, if I can say, if Everything the formal uh, assembly is concluded, uh, I would like just to say a few things. Uh, first of all, many thanks. Unfortunately, for personal reason, I cannot be in the afternoon, so I apologize for that. And I, but I would like to thank, uh, first of all, the EMPA, because it was a great honor to have all the assembly today. And I'm sure that all of you deeply appreciate what has been the perspective that uh, uh, EMPA uh, uh, board uh, provided to us. So thank you very much. It was really uh, uh, great for us. The, 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 the second point I want to say is that I will stake a personal strong commitment with all of you Virgilio students to foresee how getting stronger this project. Because we do believe that uh, uh, we as university, as medical school, could find some solution that can potentially even foster this program for the future, not only to give uh, the chance to continue, but even to find a way, in one of the slides that has been presented, you have seen how many solutions can be put in place for the medical school, PhD, during medical school, after medical school, during residency. And actually, we do, be, we do have, even in Italy now, the legal tools to provide the possibility of having PhD during residency. But of course, it would require some solution to put an even brief of concept because the legal frame does not imply the possibility to do. And I'm saying that because I am a director of a school of residence in pediatrics. And when one of the Virgilio student who is getting now in our, in the medical, in the residence school I'm chairing and we see here, he called me right away, he said, Professor, do you know that I can get into the PhD student during my third year of the residence? I said, you are crazy. How is this possible during the residency at the third year to start in parallel a, a PhD program being a residence in pediatrics. And uh, I told her that I took as a strong uh, commitment to find a way. And I believe, and this is something that I would like to assure you, that I will take the responsibility as coordinator to have a meeting with the dean of the medical school of the three universities, sitting down and say, listen, dear friends and dear colleagues, we do have this legal frame. How are we planning to organize that and to offer potentially to the Virgilio student who are getting into our residency program in our three university, the possibility to put in place this opportunity? This is the commitment that I will take personally with you. With a many deep thanks because today was a fantastic morning, but are you fantastic? for what you are doing, for your enthusiasm. And uh, I can only say thank you, because you are really the future of our medical school. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I forgot always many things. You want to thank you for the communication and everything. So now, now it's time for lunch, OK? And even the informal talk. Again, apologize if I'm leaving, so I'm sorry, but uh, thank you. Please, we need a photo with the Empire board there.